Hi friends, welcome to DevOps Jenkins course video series presented by Narendra from Do It Python Technologies. In this video, we are going to see introduction to your Jenkins. Okay, let me start that. So before going to uh, give some details about your Jenkins, you have to know something like uh, suppose if you are having some application, how you can make uh, that application to live. Okay then uh, what is the uh, continuous integration, continuous delivery and continuous deployment. Then after that we will go with the definition of Jenkins and in that we will see along with the definition what is the functionality of Jenkins, how, what, what is the purpose of Jenkins. Then we will see what is the simple flow, workflow of your Jenkins and finally we will go with advantages of Jenkins. Okay, let me start with the very first concept that is steps to make application like. Just assume you are working with some application, okay, and uh, just assume, uh, suppose uh, www.amazon.in, that is some application, web application, but before coming to that application to live, there is uh, some background work, what is that? You should know that first, if, in, if, you, if you are able to understand that concept, then you are good with Jenkins. See, suppose, anyway, that is application, so for that you have to write some code. And before writing code, you should have some plan. What is the purpose of that? Uh, what are the uh, options we require for that applications? Of course, there is a plan. Once if you have a plan in your hand, right, then developer will come, right? Developer will write the code for that application. Once if he completed that uh, code for that application, he stores that application somewhere in, in some folder or directory. Okay, just assume that he is going to store that code in some repository. Just simply as of now, assume that repository is nothing but a place where you will, uh, developer will push the code to that location. Okay, generally uh, we can use uh, for that repositories like uh, JIT or SVN. Okay, okay. Once the code is there here, right, then developer will send a mail to build team. Yeah, we have developed this and sort of code, just uh, build it. Then now build team will come, right? And they build the code using some tools like Ant, Maven, or Gradle. Once the build is successfully completed, so build is nothing but guys. Suppose if you are having a Java code, after compilation of that, you will get some compiled code like var, jar, or R files. So th those code nothing but build code. That build code, build team will store into again some place or compiled code they will store, the build team will store into some different place. Just assume that is called artifact. Artifact, okay? It's nothing but compiled source code, like your var, app, or jar files. Okay, after the completion of build by the build team, okay, they will drop a mail to suppose testing team. Yeah, we have built the code successfully. Okay, in case if there is an error, they will again mail to your developer team. In case if there is build is failed, then they will contact the developer team. So this is the problem, we failed. So what is the reason for that? They will rectify and they will again, they will update the code into here and from there build team will take the code and they will build it. Once if it is done successfully, they will copy to artifact and they will send a mail to testing team, operations testing team. Okay, now operation testing team will come to picture then what they will do? Simply, they will deploy that on test environment, like UAT, okay? If that test is successfully completed, okay, then the test team will uh, send mail to suppose production team. Then production team will deploy the code uh, on production servers so that your application will come to life, okay? So guys, if you observe here, each and every step is a manual here. So that is, suppose a developer completed the code and he will push the code into, suppose here, repository. Then they have to send some communication to build team. Then build team will come to here and they have to take that code from repository and they have to build it. Once if it is built, they have to store it in this location, suppose artifact. Then again, they have to send communication to some, suppose, testing team. They have to test it. Once test is successful, then we have to pass information to product team. Then they have to take code from here and they have to 
deploy the code so that your application will go to live right so these are all the manual steps so definitely they will take some time whenever there is a change in code whenever if you want to change some code yeah developer will change the code then from here he has to intimate to them and they has to build it and they have to communicate with the test team and again after that if test is successfully completed then they have to communicate for thing so all are manual steps instead of that just assume you are having some tool instead of that just assume you are having some tool that tool assume that i am connecting all these parts to my tool just assume then what will happen <clears throat> i have some tool here whenever there is a change in uh, repository means if developer will change some code then that code will be stored into repository okay whenever your repository code is changing then at that time i will make a some condition with this tool what is that is whenever there is a change in code automatically my tool will grab that code or my, my tool will trigger uh, identify the changes whenever there is a change in code in repository assume that again my tool will automatically trigger the build team so that the build will be automatically done once if it is done once if it is success okay then my tool will take that code and store into some artifact in case if there is a fail then my tool itself will send a mail to your developer team what is that error that log they will, my tool will send just assume okay if it is success my tool itself store my code into artifact okay once if there is a new artifact my tool itself it will deploy the code and also it will test by using some uh, testing methods using selenium or j unit test once if test is completed okay then my tool itself will deploy the code on production servers but of course before going to production servers there should be some condition when you have to deploy what is the time to deploy okay that will take care so if i am having a some tool which do these actions automatically then our work will reduce whenever there is a change in code in our repository then automatically my tool itself identify that and my tool itself trigger the build team my tool itself that build resultant like var r jar files will store into some artifact and my tool itself do the testing and finally deployment also that means simply your tool is integrating all these parts right so now this is this tool is some like if you are having a some integration tool then you got your work is very easy in order to uh, send your uh, application to live whenever there is a change in in your code now in this place this integration tool is like uh, you are having different types of integration tools like jenkins bamboo okay now we are going to discuss one of the tool that is about jenkins so now you can say that if this tool name is jenkins i can say that this tool is used to integrate all these right then if it integrates then this step is not required this step is not required this step is not required this step is also not required right now let me go with that okay <clears throat> now you are have a developer he developed the code that developed the code i am that repository i am going to integrate okay so these are the parts right these are the parts suppose if in case if you want to uh, deploy your application up to test environment okay. now if i have a jenkins tool like integration so what it will do it will integrate with the repository whenever there is a change automatically my jenkins will identify that so for that there are some properties so based on tool if it is jenkins some property if it is bamboo you have different properties so automatically they will identify that changes once there is a change my tool itself will build the that application using either ant or maven or gradle tools once if it is done then my tool itself store that into artifact then it will deploy into test environment 
right now here apart from deploy apart from deploy if you observe up to this part only this part basically you are integrating a repository to i mean repository code build and artifact so this concept is called basically continuous integration okay once if you are able to deploy your code even on a test environment automatically then by combining these two continuous integration plus automatic deployment on your test environment is called continuous delivery okay that means once if it is success then we are ready to promote our code to production we are ready to deliver the code to prod that's it so i can say now jenkins is basically ci cd continuous integration continuous delivery tool of course you can also do continuous deployment but instead of doing directly a deployment with the help of jenkins it's better to do deployment with the help of ansible okay now there is some uh, link is there between your ansible and jenkins through which your uh, ansible will triggered by jenkins then so that your ansible will deploy your applications of course you can also deploy a code on production servers using jenkins okay now <clears throat> if you are able to develop the compiled source code and test it on test on environment and if you deploy your code on your production servers as well automatically now this this entire step is automatic then that is called finally continuous deployment okay now you can say that continuous deployment is nothing but combination of continuous integration and continuous delivery okay so continuous integration plus automatic deployment on only test on only test environment then that is called continuous delivery and along with this continuous integration continuous delivery if you are able to do automatic deployment on production servers then that is called continuous deployment that's it guys simple so basically jenkins is a continuous integration and continuous delivery tool so most of the cases uh, we won't deploy our application directly with the help of jenkins of course we can do that if it is required then we can do that okay so once if you are good with continuous integration continuous delivery and continuous deployment then you can start about jenkins okay so simply what is a jenkins it is a integration tool okay but along with that actually it is a leading open source tool to perform your continuous integration and continuous delivery in software development okay then we know that already continuous integration continuous delivery is nothing but it is a software development practice in which automatically build test and deploy software projects every time whenever developer pushes a code change in the to the repository so whenever there is a change in your uh, code repository then your ansible will automatically identify that change and it will build and test and deploy to your test environment basically test environment so that is the concept of continuous integration and continuous delivery so generally instead of saying continuous integration and continuous delivery most of the people they used to call like jenkins is a ci cd tool so don't confuse that it is not a continuous integration continuous deployment it is a continuous integration and continuous delivery so up to test environment automatic deployment that's it so using jenkins up to test environment deployment is automatic process that's it okay now <clears throat> simply then now we can say that what is the functionality of your jenkins so building our application from version control system like git or um, svn then running acceptance uh, test deploy applications on dev and uat environment simply on test environment okay now what is the simple workflow for your jenkins see simple 
so develop basically developer check their source code into repository right so from there your jenkins work will start so whenever there is a change in your code repository okay your jenkins automatically uh, handle that changes or whenever there is a change in your code repository jenkins will automatically trigger with that identification okay and so that jenkins will pick up that change source code and trigger now build tool and run if any test if required so that is based on in in, in jenkins tool we have to do each and every step so how you want to uh, identify the changes in your code repository for that you have to do something okay that means basically first of all you have to connect your jenkins with your uh, source code i mean code repository so for that there is some plugin there is a uh, third party software is there okay with that the software like api you you have to connect to both of them and you have to write condition when should uh, it has to identify that once if it is able to identify that changes then again you have to integrate your jenkins with the build tools okay then once if you uh, build that based on changes in your code repository your jenkins will trigger that build team so anyway build team uh, i mean uh, build tool will uh, build your application like jar var files and based on that it will store that resultant in some artifact and from there if in case if you write some code or some options in your jenkins to test that yeah, i mean to deploy and test it it will do that action as well okay so the build output will be available in the jenkins dashboards automatically notifications can also send back to the developer in case if there is any failure or for even for success also you can set this some configuration so that that out, that mail will be sent to your developer okay now so simply jenkins is connected to the version control system build tool test and production environment quality analysis tool testing automation tools some okay guys remember that if you want to deploy your applications on your production environment using jenkins you can do it but along with that you can also do that one of the connection between jenkins and ansible now ansible will also take care about that okay assume this is your jenkins ansible you are having ansible here jenkins some server is there directly using jenkins you can deploy your required application on your server otherwise you can also trigger ansible ansible will do deploy on your servers okay so basically ansible we know that already in my tutorial i have given some of the uh, videos about ansible right so ansible is a configuration management tool it can handle number of servers at a time okay okay guys then finally what are the advantages of your jenkins so basically it is a open source tool okay with great community support means third party plugin support because in order to connect your jenkins with the git or jenkins with the ant or maven i mean build tool or jenkins with some artifact okay uh, like jfrog artifact or jenkins with your uh, uh, ansible tool you should have some plugins so based on tools jenkins with other tool you have to connect jenkins with some required tool you should have some plugin okay so to develop that plugin there is a third party is there so that nothing but community support is there for your jenkins and it is easy to install so with the help of great uh, this third party or third party uh, community you are having uh, up, uh, as of now almost 1000 plus plugins to make your work as easy suppose uh you are going to connect just as you are going to connect your ansible with uh, jenkins with ansible as of now there is no plugin just assume okay already there is but assume if there is no plugin to connect your jenkins with ansible then for that you can develop your own code to make that connection you can develop a plugin software and and you can also share that with community so that that can be used by useful to some others 
okay basically open source tools are uh, developed for that purpose only if, if you make an anything as open any tool as open then that will be definitely popular because generally third party will come okay they will uh, do support for your open source tool okay so because of it is open source uh, it's free of cost okay and one more thing you have to remember that it is built with java and hence it's portable to all the major platforms okay guys thank you for watching this video uh, do subscribe my channel so that you will get notifications whenever we post some new videos okay if you have any queries you can drop a mail to this do with python or of gmail.com or you can also comment on the below of this video okay bye